Well, good morning and many thanks for allowing me to be part of your Sunday morning this morning. We're here just on the banks of Loch Ken in uh, Dumfries and Galloway. And I wanted to turn to the book of Romans just for a verse this morning. It's one of the verses we've been looking at on a Sunday afternoon down at Bridge End Gospel Hall. And uh, Romans 6 verse number 23, the Apostle Paul writes this, For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we do look to God to bless his word this morning. Uh, very short verse, but it's a verse that really changes and challenges our understanding of what it means to be right and get right with God. Uh, the man who wrote that verse was as surprising as that verse. Uh, he had started off as a great religious leader, uh, a Pharisee, Saul of Tarsus, and he had believed all of his life that you get what you deserve, you get what you buy. And he applied that principle to, to getting to heaven and getting right with God. And uh, I suppose today, amongst those folks who believe that there is a God and who think a little bit about it, they will probably come to the idea that uh, one day they'll meet that God and they probably too, after a bit of thought, will realise that maybe God isn't going to be completely satisfied with the way that they've lived their life. And uh, if they follow through that line of thinking, they will also come to the understanding that God one day will judge them. But oftentimes folks then draw the conclusion that since we're going to meet God one day and since God is going to judge us, then we ought to try very hard to impress God and perhaps even earn uh, our right to, into his heaven. And oftentimes in the thinking of religious people, uh, heaven is for good people, uh, hell is for bad people, and usually in the mind of religious people, I'm a good person. Well, the Apostle Paul who wrote that verse once thought like that, but he came to the understanding that by the law uh, is not salvation, but by the law is the knowledge of sin. And uh, he understood that the harder he tried to please God, uh, the further away it seemed that he was getting, almost like paddling up Loch Ken against the wind. If there was a strong wind blowing, you might paddle, 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 but it just kept blowing you back. Uh, now, of course, when you come to the New Testament, not only does the Apostle Paul turn that idea of religion on its head, work hard, get to heaven, but uh, the Lord Jesus, long before the Apostle Paul wrote that verse, turned that idea on its head completely. In fact, Lord Jesus Christ did three things that dramatically change our understanding of how we get right with God and how we have access to his heaven. First of all, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ raised the standard. He raised the bar. There was someone who came to him, a young man that came to him one day and referred to him as good master. And the Lord Jesus Christ, with uh, uh, clarity and in quite a startling way, said, why do you call me good? There is none good but God. In other words, the only person that is thoroughly good, that is good enough by God's standards, is God. So God, God raises the bar. The Lord Jesus Christ raises the bar as to what God regards as good. It's not just good enough for me or good enough for you, but it's good enough for God, and there is only one that ever meets that standard. And so the Lord Jesus Christ challenged that idea. Work hard, earn, earn your place into heaven by raising the standard. Secondly, the Lord Jesus Christ change that uh, whole idea of how to get into heaven, not only by raising the standard, but by taking our place. And if you were to go to Luke chapter 23, uh, there on the cross, the, the thief makes a startling observation that he and the other thief are there because of the sins, because of the broken laws that they've committed. We are here as a just result of our deeds, says the thief. But this man, pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ, this man has done nothing amiss. And that, of course, is part of God's plan from the very beginning of the Bible. It's part of his revelation that someone would take the place of the sinner, that, 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 that a lamb would come, Isaiah 53 speaks about it, a lamb would come and would be led to the slaughter, that he would bear the sins of many, and that by knowing him, by knowing him, my righteous servant would make many right. And so Lord Jesus Christ turned this idea of earning a place in heaven upside down. You, first of all, the standard is too high. And secondly, he goes against all of that. He didn't need to earn a way into heaven. He took the punishment for our sin. Uh, he's the one who 
who, who, who broke that whole way of looking at things. He, he, he didn't get what he earned. He got punishment, although he was absolutely perfect. And the third thing the Lord Jesus Christ did that turns our understanding of religion on its head is that he forgave sins. He not only took the place of the sinner, but he forgave sins. There's many examples of that, of course, in the New Testament. One of the best and most dramatic is the man that was brought to him paralyzed by his friends. And not only did the Lord Jesus Christ tell him to get up and walk and give him the gift of uh, the ability to, and, and power in his limbs, but he said, your sins are forgiven you. And on that basis, the man gets up and walks. Now, if you get what you deserve, you don't need forgiveness. And the Lord Jesus Christ forgives, he takes the place of the sinner, and he raises the standard. And on that basis, uh, the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, the wages of sin is death. When it comes to sin, you get what you deserve. But listen, when it comes to eternal life and, and, and a home in heaven, it's the gift of God that is eternal life. You can't do, what can you do to earn something eternal? What can someone who, who's only here for a few years actually do to accumulate sufficient uh, good works in order to, to earn that? There are some things you could save up for and maybe get. Maybe you could save up for a car. And maybe that's within your, 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 your scope. Uh, maybe you could aim even higher than that and, and, and aim for a house in New Cumnock. That would probably be the highest goal I'm sure that anyone could possibly have. But unlike, listen to that, any of us could earn enough or save enough to purchase Buckingham Palace or the Taj Mahal. It just is inconceivable. Well, here's something higher than that, eternal life. So the, the, the goal, as the Lord Jesus Christ has had said earlier on, is, is too high. The standard is too high. Uh, and it is by grace here in Romans 6, verse 23. Uh, it is by grace. It's the gift of God that is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And God's, God's solution to that insurmountable problem for you and I, that insurmountable problem of being good enough or earning enough or getting into heaven on the basis of what we've done, his solution is divine grace, God's loving kindness towards us in his son in taking our place. And all we can do is receive that as a gift. We can't possibly earn it. That God loved this world so much that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him need not perish but have everlasting life. Many thanks for allowing me to be part of your Sunday morning this morning. And uh, if you are free, of course, on Sunday afternoon, do join us at three o'clock down at the Bridge End Gospel Hall. Many thanks.